Heavy Cardboard, Episode 71, the 2016 Golden Elephant Award finalists. Coming to you from the new HCHQ in Denver, Colorado, welcome to Heavy Cardboard, where we talk medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx, and today we're announcing the finalists for the 2016 Golden Elephant Award. We're your hosts, I'm Edward. And I'm Amanda. So you may have noticed, things might sound a little different. I sure hope you've noticed. (laughs) No doubt, right? (laughs) (laughs) So we got a whole bunch of new kit, lots and lots of new kit or new gear if you prefer. So as you hear us, we're on our new mics, the Electro Voice RE20s. Both of us got the same mic. Mm -hmm, Which were made for us, actually. Were they? You remember you said that they were like oh. two, they were, whenever we got them, they were like hours old. Yeah, that that is true. Electro, actually, uh, we went to a local guitar center to go demo a bunch of uh, condenser mm-hmm. mics and found out we don't have the right environment for condenser nope. mics. So we f- did a little bit more homework, found out that, oh, hey, these broadcast mics, these are kind of what we need. <laughs> So big shout out to Josh from Brawling Brothers, a yes. good friend of ours who who helped us out with that. And he has the uh, the history, I guess, of, of working in the industry. Mm-hmm. And so he, he was able to learn us a whole lot. Yeah. And like in like 20 minutes, we were like, oh, we learned a lot more than that 20 minutes with Josh than we had in a while. So that was nice. Yeah. It's uh, nice to have resources. No doubt. And there's only so much research you can do before yeah. you just get like, uh, it, it all becomes colors. Right. Right. So anyway, so we got the new mics and in between the new mics and the computer, there's a couple other pieces of hardware that some of y'all might care about this. Some of y'all might not. But we thought we would kind of share with you either way. Yeah. So there are Cloudlifter CL1s, which basically... They add a boost of gain or the sound that's coming from the mics is a whole lot louder than it would be without those. We actually have experimented with it and we found a no- noticeable difference. Drastic difference. It's about 25 decibel yeah. difference. From the mics into the cloud lifter and from the cloud lifter into a Steinberg UR44 audio interface. So it makes us sound as much like us as is possible. Yeah, it does. So as if you were right here with us, which is the whole point of doing this. Mm -hmm. And it converts the signal from the mics from an analog signal to a digital one that the computer can use, and it goes into the computer. So obviously we got a whole bunch of other stuff, you know, cable, shock mounts, pop filters, boom arms for the mics, et cetera, et cetera. So it really feels like we're in a studio now. It really does. And we also got drapes for the one wall so that during the videos you couldn't see the closet and the door and everything. So letting in behind the scenes stuff. Oh, dang it. Sorry. And so that really deadens part that part of the wall and it makes it it just it feels like a studio in here. It It really really does. does. Which, you know, weird because we That's built kind a of studio. what it is. So if this sounds as good as to y'all as it does to us, got to be honest, it's from a ton of research, our chat with Josh, as well as the generosity of our patrons over on Patreon, as well as the show's sponsors, Game Surplus and BoardGameTables.com. So seriously, a major thank you to everybody that has made this all possible yeah. and, and to y'all listeners in general because of the fact that if nobody's listening, why are we doing this? It doesn't really matter if we don't have anybody listening. So thank you for, thank you for listening and thank you for your support. Yep, totally. So speaking of it feeling like a new studio, that's because it actually is in a new studio. We're actually two thirds of the way done with the new studio. The live streaming studio for the videos and the podcast parts of HCHQ are now complete. You can actually see it in our most recent play of the video of Food Chain Magnate that we hosted over uh, back on Easter, it Mm -hmm. actually was. Mm -hmm. So go check that out if you're curious to actually see what it looks like in here. The remaining third of the studio, though, is going to be for future kind of recorded in-studio stuff. Interviews, reviews, previews, stuff like that. But it's going to be a considerably different format than what we're doing with the live streaming And that's still a work in progress. And honestly, it's not a priority because we're not going to be doing that stuff right now. Right. We've got a a while. Right. So we're 
planning for the future is yeah. what we're doing here. So that third of the studio is a work in progress and will be probably until at least June for the simple fact that not only do we have a whole bunch of content coming y'all's way, but, you know, heavy con is in between now and yes. then. Yes. So speaking of heavy con, prep is well underway. Yes. You, you lists don't and lists <laughs> and then some more lists and then a couple more. Things are going smoothly, though, I think. Yeah. Uh, lots of publisher supports coming in, which is awesome. Things are shaping up, up well. Just anxious for it to get here, but I'm also terrified that yeah. it's, by the time this releases, it's five weeks mm-hmm. to the day. And, to, and I'm like, wait, I'm not ready for yeah. that. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it can hurry up like, and get didn't, here. Didn't last year's HeavyCon end like two days ago? Like, it's just crazy how fast everything happens. It really is. So speaking of conventions... A number of folks have inquired as to what cons are we going to be attending this year. So we finally sat down and actually firmed up our schedule. Right. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work with time off of work, but hey, maybe I get fired. I'm okay with that. <laughs> not really, but you get the idea. So first up, heavy con, obviously, right? Memorial Day weekend. Then we have the Rocky Mountain Gaming Vacation, quote unquote, uh, up in Breckenridge, Colorado. We're only going up for a day this year, but it's possible we may be there for the whole time next year. Origins is next in mid-June. It's over in Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. WBC in late July, which is at the Seven Springs Mountain Resort in Pennsylvania. Yeah, they moved it. I, I think it was a couple hours further west than where it was previously. Oh, okay. So we're going as guests of, of uh, Game Surplus. So super excited to really find out how good I am at Dominant Species. In I'm the excited to there. see this. Or not. I don't know how that <laughs> works. We'll see. I'm, I, I expect to get housed, but it'll be fun either way. Yeah. We have another local convention, Beacon, has joined up with the Conclave of Gamers, which is uh, run by another guy that we know. Uh, here in Denver, that's in late August, early September. Then Spiel in late October in Essen, Germany. BGGCon in late November, obviously in Dallas, Texas. Lastly, even though it's technically in 2018, Lyricon in Lira, Portugal. Hoping to be able to t- attend more than these in 2018. All depends whether or not I'm producing heavy cardboard full time right. or not at that point. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And that's a lot of travel. I'm glad I have my backpack that I got for Christmas because <laughs> it is a nice backpack. It's a very nice backpack and I can carry all of my stuff in it. It's awesome. And we can carry all our kit that we need for yeah, mobile we can. recording. Yep. Looking forward to it. So yeah, a lot of conventions between now and then. And lots of interviews too then. Yep. And a lot of travel and a lot of nervousness about doing all this. Yeah. And I'm sure we're going to be hooking up meetups and, and yeah. stuff like that uh, throughout the summer. So keep an ear out for those guys. Mm-hmm. All of the ways to contact us are on our website, heavycardboard.com. And we rely on the generous support from our patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to join the community, check us out on patreon.com forward slash heavy cardboard. With our new studio coming online and with BoardGameTables.com being one of the show's sponsors, we thought it only right that we, you know, become an owner of one of these amazing tables and not just an admirer of them. So a couple weeks ago, we went ahead and ordered one. I gotta admit that at this point, I can only think that Tom Petty has it right in that the waiting is the hardest part for sure. Now, with the studio being built, We needed a table that fit our specific needs, and Chad was happy to work with us, just as he is with everybody else. We wanted a six foot long table, but instead of three or four foot width, we specifically wanted a three and a half foot or 42 inch wide playing surface. I didn't know this at the time, but BoardGameTables.com can customize each and every table to whatever their customers want and need. I mean, Chad himself is awaiting delivery on a nine foot long, three and a half foot wide table for his dining room. I mean, that's a massive banquet table. So yeah, if you want it, they can work with you on it. So if you're in the market for what is sure to become the absolute centerpiece of your game room, you owe it to yourself to head over to boardgametables.com and take a look at the killer selection of tables they have. Be sure to let them know that Heavy Cardboard sent you. 
Now, we've talked about this a few times in the past, but back in 2013, I started Heavy Cardboard with our good friend Tony. The catalyst of the show, though, was that there just wasn't much, if any, discussion about the types of games that we enjoy playing. The reason that I bring this up is that the Golden Elephant Award came about in a very similar fashion. Not only was there little, if any, coverage of many of the games that we enjoy playing, but almost universally, the awards that existed completely overlooked or excluded most of those same games. So much like Heavy Cardboard, the Golden Elephant Award came about to fill a gap that we saw within the hobby. We wanted to help shine a light on these off-overlooked, amazing games. And thus, in 2013 and every year since, the Golden Elephant Award has been handed out to what we feel is the most outstanding game of the year from the heavy gamer's perspective. We do use certain criteria on which to judge the games, but much like Justice Potter Stewart in Jacob Ellis v. Ohio, I know it when I see it. The following is the GEA criteria. First, depth of analysis and planning. What considerations must be taken into account to make the right decisions? So basically, how much thinking goes involved in the planning, right? Right. Depth of gameplay. A game doesn't have to be complex, but it should require solid analysis during play to play well. In other words, I need to know that what I'm doing and looking ahead makes sense, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Right. Game length. A game doesn't have to be long, but it must comprise a multitude of meaningful decision points. Again, doesn't have to be long, right? Right. Just every decision you have should be meaningful. It should be meaningful, everything right. that you do. Low luck factor. Winning and losing, ultimately, should be determined by whomever made the better decisions throughout the game. Notice it says low luck and not no luck. Yes. Opacity of decisions and interaction. To what degree do the critical decisions within the game have an impact upon other players? So, this kind of covers player interaction. Right. We don't, not too keen on multiplayer solitaire, right? Mm -hmm. The enjoyment factor. Ultimately, do we enjoy the experience that the game provides both to ourselves as well as to the other players? Pretty self-explanatory, yeah? Yeah. Reprints are ineligible. The first year that the game is physically available is the year that it will be considered for inclusion of the award. So, in other words, Great Zimbabwe, Indonesia, Vinos, those kind of games. Sorry, Heavy Cardboard wasn't around when y'all first came about. My bad. Each year, around the beginning of April, the finalists are announced. Then, at HeavyCon, that year's Golden Elephant Award winner is announced. Or, you know, this year. Because of the studio, mid-April. That works, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Go with it. <laughs> all right. So with all that said, 2016, it was a solid year, but it was more a solid year for midweight games yeah. and heavy games, right? Oh, yeah. So outside of a lot of those reprints that we just kind of mentioned, mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot that came out that's truly on the heavier end of the, uh, of the weight scale. There were some, obviously, and we're going to obviously hit on some right. of those here momentarily but it's not to say that it was a poor year however just just the, the focus of the year seemed to be more midweight than heavyweight yeah it just it wasn't like a there wasn't like an avalanche of really heavy games at all it's i feel like, like there like, were in years previous yeah i do as well but it, this year it feels like there was you know it wasn't like an avalanche it was like a couple of snowflakes yeah a, a, a flurry. A flurry. That's much better than right. what I said. And not like a flurry meaning a whole flood. No, of, like a right. flurry of snow. There you go. Right. <laughs> As many of y'all know, Game Surplus has been a heavy cardboard sponsor from the very early on. We thought that it was a perfect match for what it is that we do, as well as their proclivity to go the extra mile to hunt down that imported game that a customer may want. They pride themselves on their personal, detail-oriented customer service, and that's exactly the type of people and company that we love being associated with. So, on that note, they've recently updated their website, and to celebrate that, they're offering Heavy Cardboard listeners 10% off their entire order for the next few days. Just go to gamesurplus.com, order any and all of the games that you want, and oh, by the way, Tramways, 1846 and Great Western Trail are all in stock right now. Use the coupon code 2017GEA to get 10% off your entire order. This is only good for a few days now. It's through Sunday, April 23rd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. In other words, that's 4 a.m. Monday for all the UTC people out there. Again, 
2017 GEA is the coupon code for 10% off your entire order. All right. You ready to announce the 2016 Golden Elephant Award finalists? I sure am, but let's do it a little different. What? Wait, what? Like, let's do it alphabetically, but from the other direction. Oh, you know how to live a little. Duh. This is me rolling my eyes. All right. So, your honor, ma'am, please (laughs) go for it. All right. So, to start out backwards. But in in alphabetical order. Just the other way. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Tramways. Designed by Alban Viard, art by Paul Lon and Sampo Siko, published by AV Studio Games. It plays one to five players in about two hours. Our friend Alban has completely knocked it out of the park here. Um, we've already talked about it in a previous episode. He has, in some ways, created another Age of Steam type of game that can have expansion on top of expansion for years to come. Yeah, it feels like a like an evolution of, mm-hmm. of Age of Steam. It does. And we, we covered this in episode 66 already, mm-hmm. so I'm sure folks can go back and listen to it right. if they haven't already. It's definitely its own game, but you can, you can really feel the roots of Age of Steam mm-hmm. within it. Mm-hmm. It has a really wonderful mix of route building, deck building, a devious auction for turn order and it forces you to adjust your plans based on both what's in your hand as well as what the other players do personally i think arguably it's album vr's best game to date although i really do like small city still yeah yeah but i i would have to i would would put tramways above small city okay cool that works out so tramways first one all right Next up is Pax Renaissance, designed by Phil and Matt Eklund, published by Sierra Madre Games. It plays two to four players in one to two hours. It's another piece of Eklund perfection. I, I've noticed the trend in 2016 that games that tended to be evolutions of game systems, Pax Renaissance is definitely another one. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just talked about Tramways, kind of an evolution of Age of Steam. Right. And now we have Pax Ren, which is an evolution of... Pax Porfiriana right. and Pax Premier. It's as if those two had a Renaissance baby <clears throat> and we have Pax Renaissance. <laughs> I mean, I'll be perfectly frank. You can speak to this game much better than I can just due to the number of plays, but I knew this was special from even just my first play. Yeah, it's it's definitely opaque. Yeah. And, and it's the first of two opaque games that's going to be on the finalist list. Pax Ren is a game that we found to be that when it hits the table, it stays on the table Mm -hmm. for two to three immediate plays back to back to back, which I I literally cannot think of another game in our collection that that happens. Oh, we just finished a game? Yeah, let's play it again. We're always on to something else, Mm -hmm. be it game day, whatever. Mm -hmm. This is the only game that I've ever seen played, you know, two, three, four times in a row by the same group of Mm -hmm. people, which is always a fantastic sign. Yeah. All right, next up we have Millennium Blades, designed by D. Brad Dalton Jr., art by Fabio Fontes, and published by Level 99. It plays two to five players in one and a half to two and a half hours. Now, this one sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? (laughs) I mean, it has so many things that on their own, I really dislike real time aspects. It has a manga or anime artwork, it has random card draws and CCGs. Yet, (laughs) this game is just one of the most fun games that I've played all year. And it's one of the most innovative I've seen. The premise is just crazy. I mean, in the mad dash you feel to get all your cards purchased and down correctly before the timer is about to end. It's just, it's chaotic and it makes you feel like you are in the setting of the game. It makes you feel like you are in that tournament. It really does. It really does. Now, I burn out on magic back in the day and really have zero interest in general for CCGs. Mm -hmm. Yet, the way this game simulates all aspects of CCGs, it somehow makes it an enjoyable, ever-changing experience that just was truly one of the biggest and best surprises for me Mm -hmm. in 2016. Absolutely. Now, normally I shy away from using the word fun when it comes to, you know, the podcast or whether it comes to the videos or whatever. 
just the show in general, because fun is such a personal thing. One person's fun is another person's work. I mean, some people were, uh, said that, you know, Arkwright is the the spreadsheet, the yeah, game. And yeah. I, I work on spreadsheets all day. I don't want to come home and do that. Right. That's fine. I get that. So that's why I shy away from the word fun. Yet here, I don't know of a better way to describe it. The game is just a plain blast Mm -hmm. to play. And we thought that it should be recognized for not only being fun, but like you said, the innovation that it brings to the table. There is literally nothing else out there that is like this game. And it was an amazing experience. Everybody, at least within our group, 15, 20 people or so that have played it, all loved it, Mm -hmm. had a blast, even those that aren't big into CCGs. So, yeah, I know this is going to strike folks as... A queer choice, but we really do feel like it fits everything that the golden elephant is supposed to represent, mm-hmm. and thus, it's a finalist. Absolutely. All right, next up is An Infamous Traffic, designed by Cole Worley. The R was also by Cole, and it was published by Holland Spiele. It plays two to five players in 45 minutes to two hours. Opium trafficking? Really? Yeah. I mean, why not, right? Who who doesn't like trafficking in in other people's in sadness? China in the 1800s? Sure, it's it that's because that's what it deals with is the opium trade in China in the late 1800s, and it was one of the most opaque games I have ever played. Like I had no idea what I was doing at any point. However, it was you, so good though. But you grokked it faster than yeah. anybody else I've seen yeah, who's tried this game. You completely. And you tend to struggle. Oh, at, the first play? Absolutely. But this one... A, it just clicked. I, no problem. It, I didn't understand why I was doing what I was doing, but it made sense to me to do X, Y, or Z. I might not have understood why I was doing it, but it made sense. So it was intuitive yeah, to you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. And and like you mentioned, this is the other opaque game yeah. that, that I alluded to earlier. And this one definitely needs a specific group of people to play it mm-hmm. as... It certainly one of the most in your face, highly confrontational games that we have ever come across. This is in a different way than we we talked about Neue Heimat before, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, but this is a different level of that. Mechanically, it's relatively straightforward, but the how and the why that you just mentioned of what your actions do and can impact are not at all straightforward. No. And there's definitely a razor edge balance to the game that can make it a bit fragile, a la some people say container is, Mm. even though they're completely different games, just fragile in that nature. But the thing is, with that fragility, it's entirely within the each of the player's own control. Now, maybe not your control by yourself or my control, but as a group, Mm -hmm. everything that happens in that game, we dictate how it how it happens and when it happens exactly and just like container like you mentioned yeah that's a very good allegory when you pair up a game with very sharp elbows with a unique even peculiar theme i mean how many opm trade games do y'all know of Mm. you have the potential for something special now be mindful of the player count at which you play this Mm -hmm. but outside of that it's certainly one that absolutely bears experiencing and just a number of plays on yeah all right, next up we have The Colonist, designed by Tim Pools, art by Clemens Franz, and published by both Lookout Games and Mayfair. It plays one to four in 30 minutes to six hours. You said it was designed by Uwe Rosenberg? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the game we wanted Uwe to Oh, design. my bad. Yeah, somebody in our group mentioned that, quote unquote, this is the game I wanted Uwe Rosenberg to make. Well, regardless of who designed it, I'm glad it was created. Yeah. The plethora of paths that you can take coupled with the variability from game to game, it gives the game a whole lot of legs, don't you think? It really does. The dynamic board, the card play, the depth, and and the scope of the game is why it's on my list, because you can can play one era, you can play two, you can play all four, you can start an era two, you can start an era four. It's just... It's totally modular without it being modular, if that makes sense. It's just... I mean, for an example, I mean, we sat down for a demo of this at BGG Con and we wanted it after the first turn of the first era that we sat down. Everybody was. It wasn't just you and I. Yeah, all four of us at the table. It definitely is a good sign. Yeah. 
And kind of like what you said about being able to mix up uh, what you want in playtime as well as the play experience and mixing up the different eras on and how much do I feel like playing right now. It keeps the game on the table. An amazing first design by Tim Pools mm-hmm. and a worthy inclusion, in my opinion, oh, yeah. on this list. All right. And last up, we have 1822, The Railways of Great Britain, designed by Simon Cutforth and published by All Aboard Games. It plays three to seven players and anywhere from five to seven hours. Just wow. Outside of us and maybe dual gauge podcast and maybe a little bit with our buddies over on Punching Cardboard, where else are you going to hear about, yeah, this amazing game that plays, you know, five to seven hours? Right. <laughs> the game, it redefines 18xx. I Yeah, I mean, it's no secret that, that we, like many fellow elephants, mm-hmm. are big fans of 18xx games. Not all are, understood, but we are. But 1822 stands out. Mm-hmm. Not only does it carry forward throughout the majority of the game the tenseness of the initial auctions, but the variability of the order in which the companies can become available make for a wildly unique experience every single time you put it down on the table. There is no scripting. There is no, 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 this company should lay this track exactly. this way. It all depends when it comes out, what other companies are available at the avail- at the time this one becomes mm-hmm. available. It is unlike any other 18xx game that I have ever played. Granted, this is not, we are not 18xx experts. No. We are just folks that enjoy that. But we've played our fair share of them. We have. And for me, the fact that whether you enjoy the engineering side of 18xx games or more on the financial side, there's something here for all fans of the genre. A truly innovative and special game and not just a special 18xx game. No, it's a special game. Totally agree. Yeah. So that's it. That's 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 the list. So this year we got six finalists. Yeah. I think I think that covers covers the gamut. It came, yeah, I, I, it really does. I feel like that is a very good representative of what was popular as well as what was fantastic and what was standout. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the year 2016. Mm-hmm. Now, there are people probably yelling at the radio. There are people probably cussing us. Hey, what about this? Or what about this? I heard something about an iPad being thrown off a train. Right. Something about that. Yeah. Sorry, Carmen. <laughs> so there are some honorable mentions. Now, we don't want this to become a generic thing to where, oh, they just list every heavy game and no. all the great medium game, da 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 da. So, It's subjective, right? I mean, I don't care if it were two people voting on this or whether it's 2,000 people voting on this. It's not a popularity contest, and it's going to be subjective. So this is what we came up with. Exactly. There are some honorable mentions, and I'm going to do these with a twist. It's called alphabetically. What? First up, Forged in Steel. We talked a ton about this game, but we just felt like the other ones a little bit higher. Mm Mm-hmm. Great Western Trail, Hands in the Sea, High Treason, and Terraforming Mars. All great games in their own right, just didn't make the cut. Yeah. It's not to say that they're bad or anything like no. that. If in they fact, were bad, we, they we would... own all of them right. and we enjoy all of exactly. them. So if, absolutely. If they were bad, they wouldn't be on the list, yeah. even a not honorable mentions list. All right, exactly. Leave yeah. Odin alone. <laughs> all right. So no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, with that said, now if you look at this list, you'll notice we've only actually reviewed one of these so far on the show. Tramways, Pax Ren, Millennium Blades, and Infamous Traffic, The Colonists, and 1822. We haven't reviewed any of them. We're about to remedy that. So, over the course of the next six weeks, we're going to hit all of these leading up to HeavyCon. Also, we're going to be doing live streams of hopefully all of these between now and HeavyCon as well, because the Golden Elephant Award is actually announced at HeavyCon. So we want to do these all these games justice between now and then. Yep. So that's it. That's the new episode. That's the new gear. That's the new kit. That's the new studio. Yep. That's what we got for, wow, 
That's a short episode this week, yeah, isn't well, it? Yeah, well, sorry, guys. I'll, I'll put lots of music interludes in there. It'll make it a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So give us feedback. Tell us uh, tell us why we're right. Tell us why we're yes. wrong. Tell us that we're nuts. We want interaction. Come on. Yeah. Let us know. Uh, we definitely want to hear uh, all about your guys' choices. And yes, we did run a contest. And no, no one chose it correctly. So I don't know what we're going to do about this. So yeah. I will talk to Carmen over at Game we'll Surplus to out. figure something out. So that's a wrap. It sure is. All right. We'll catch you all next week. Get back on that reviewing horse. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you all then. All right. Bye, everybody. Later, y'all.